Hello, this is Mr. Hornby83, and welcome to the Mr. Hornby83 show. Today I am reviewing Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 and 4, and I'll pretty much be doing three YouTube videos this week because <sighs> something, some reason, well, I'll talk about that at the end of the video, but for some reason I cannot post for three days on Facebook Live, so. There will be no commentary on Facebook Live, probably till Friday, so I'll talk about that more later. I'm also going to get my thoughts while I'm reviewing this movie and part four on the new Halloween movie. It'll be a spoiler-free, you know, thoughts on it, but I'll give my thoughts on it and why, you know, we need to get Halloween part nine. <laughs> Anyway, so, A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3. Now, this movie, after the underwhelming, you know, response that Part 2 got, really went back to kind of somewhat of the basics of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. Um, we did get Nancy back for this one. Uh, also, though, and I know everybody's done seen this movie by now, Nancy dies at the end of this one, and I'll talk about that a little more, too, because I kind of, you know, took a cheap shot at all the Nancy fans in the, uh, in the commentary I did a couple years ago of this movie. Um, but anyway, uh, so yes, this movie, my opinion, probably the best of all the Nightmare on Elm Streets. I'm not, you know, I'm saying as a movie overall, it's the best out of all of them. Not many flaws, but the problem with this one is it is going back to the roots of it is to that point where Freddy Krueger started turning into a comedian Freddy Krueger. So, <sighs> so, pretty much we'll run through these first five scenes, talk about them. Then I'll show the other scenes. I, like I said, this has always been my format. I just go from scene to scene to scene. I'm not going to play nothing because a few years ago I got in trouble for you know, not showing much of a, of a movie called Halloween Resurrection. And uh, a movie called Halloween 3, and people were like, and uh, Mirror Max and that got my video blocked. So, this is why when I do reviews, I just do it like this now. So, anyway, um, so it starts out with the opening credits, which you cannot see right now. And you see the main character, which is Kristen Parks, uh, building the Freddy house from Nightmare on Elm Street Part 1, I guess, between 2 and I guess between one and two, the house became Freddy's. I don't know, because <laughs> it was Alice's or not Alice's, Nancy's house. I skipped ahead. It was Nancy's house prior to that. So her mom comes in, tells her she needs to go to bed. She said, "Well, I was waiting for you to come home." And da da da. Tells her to go to bed. You know, her mom's a real, you know, real snooty. I'll just say snooty. Don't want it. Gotta be PJ. Anyway, uh, there's Krista taking a nap. She gets encountered by this girl that she tries to save from Freddy, but at the end of the dream sequence, it comes to find out the girl's a skeleton, and, you know, that's what wakes Kristen up. She goes in her bathroom. Freddy appears. I don't know if Kristen was still sleeping when she went to her bathroom or what, because Freddy was able to attack her and make it look like she cut her wrist. And that's what leads to her getting put in this asylum here. Where, you know, she's going crazy. She's attacking people like Max, who's played by Lawrence Fishburne. Attacking the doctors, attacking the nurses because they're trying to put her to sleep. But she's like, no, don't put me to sleep. I don't want to go to sleep. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And... He, you know, then Nancy, she starts singing the one, two, Freddy's Come For You song, and then she couldn't finish nine, ten, and then Alice comes, or, oh God, I keep saying Alice, because in part four, there's a character named Alice, and I'll talk about, or I don't know why I keep jumping to Alice, but, uh, Nancy pops up and finishes it for her, and then she gets a bond with Nancy and, um, all that. Then she's having another dream about Freddy, but this time she pulls Nancy into her dream because it's called Dream Warrior, so the people Freddy's after in this pretty much have dream power. Except for maybe the ones that die early in the movie, such as Jennifer and Philip. 
Everybody else has powers in their dream world. Why, well, if you got these powers in your dream world, why the heck can't you beat Freddy? Well, well, I'll talk more about that when we get close to the end as well. But anyway, so she tells Nancy, let's <laughs> call her Chris, tells Nancy about, you know, her, her ability to drag people into dreams and how she used to do that for her dad, and then her dad would think it was his dreams and da 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 da, but then when her mom broke up with her dad, because her mom's a total witch, I'll say witch, I don't want to get banned on here too, uh, Anyway, a <laughs> total witch, and, you know, uh, Nancy finds it fascinating, and then, you know, that comes into play later on, there's a sanitarium. Uh, oh, yeah, by the way, this is supposed to be a maximum security spot, but guess what? It gets out of it. While Freddy, like, it's in the dream world and all that, but Freddy, like, gets out, he dies, the most famous scene of the movie, well, that and the one where Freddy's like, Welcome to prime time, bitch. You know, the number two most famous scene from this movie is this, where he gets cut into a puppet himself, and then Freddy cuts it and he falls off at, right at the asylum that was next to there, which we find out is uh, the asylum where uh, Amanda Kruger was raped, Freddy's mom. And they had all the maniacs that raped her in it. Which, also, this this kind of brings up a trilogy. Not only the Dream Trilogy, like Dream Warriors, Dream Master, Dream Child. It also brings up the Amanda Kruger storyline. They don't hit on it too much in Part 4, and I'll talk more about that in a sec. They don't hit on it too much in Part 4. They do talk about it a lot in this one, but... Instead of her going to Nancy and telling Nancy everything, she's telling Neil Gordon everything. And, you know, Neil and them don't even believe. So there's the group. That's everybody that Kristen met them early in the movie. And uh, they all introduced herself, and they're talking about what happened with Philip and blah, 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 blah. Uh, then KK flips out, gets put in the quiet room. He's singing, I ain't gonna dream no more. Now, here's the other part that's, uh, you know, one of the most famous scenes from the movie. You know, I'm not gonna say it again. I just said it, but... And, you know, these doctors must have been really stupid. I mean, honestly, because... These kids are dying, especially with her. Her head's on TV, no stand underneath her foot or anything. And they think it's a suicide. I mean, honestly. How can you... How could a TV that's up on the wall, no stool under the person, unless she, like, LeBron James herself into the TV from the couch, I don't know. <laughs> or, no, actually, Michael Jordan, her way. I don't want to compare nothing good to LeBron James. <laughs> um, she bounces through there. Then right here, we get the introduction of Amanda Kruger. She's trying to explain things to Neil. Neil's like, okay, da da da, da. Then Nancy starts telling him some stuff, you know, telling him we need to put him on this one thing, and, you know. Then they do the thing where they're, like, gonna test their dream world, and we find out about the dream powers and all that, and... Pretty much... Oh, it's taken eight minutes to talk about this movie. Anyway. So pretty much, you know, Joey's fantasy dream was the... Make it with this nurse, which he almost did, but then Freddy shows up and ruins it. But prior to that, one of my favorite scenes of the movie. <laughs> Alright, so Nancy and Neil both got fired. Sims, you know, because they're getting blamed pretty much for Joey's coma. They're getting blamed for, you know, I guess they're starting to get blamed for the deaths and all that. So then Neil is, you know, leaving uh, the hospital. He sees Amanda Kruger again, although she calls herself Sister Mary something. Uh, he sees her again, and they talk. She tells him what to do to stop Freddy, and he's like, okay, all right, yeah, you know. Whatever works, as long as my kids don't die no more, even though, you know, only three of them really live, and that's partially his and Nancy's fault, but I'll talk about that later. Uh, anyway, and Nancy's telling Freddy to let Joey go, and Freddy says, come and get him, and, you know, they go to Nancy's dad, um, Donald, who still is skeptical, even after, even though he lost his wife to Freddy Krueger, and all that, 
and Nancy's going to the hospital to get the other Dream Warriors together. It's like there's only like four of them left, I think. No, nope, five of them. Only five of them left, including Joey. Well, yeah, there's four of them left, including Joey, so that makes five. But anyway. Then they all get in sync somehow with, you know, Kristen in a quiet room. And, you know, Kristen flips out because they find out Nancy got fired and taken away from them. And, uh, da -da -da. <laughs> uh, she's the first one to die. You see what her power is. And I, I'll, I'll talk about those power things, too, in a bit. Uh, then he dies, then he goes after Nancy, Kristen, and Kincaid, where they go to take on, also Neil and Donald are going to bury Freddy's remains, but honestly, this is also one of the best, honestly, yeah, I joked about the one scene with the nurse, but <laughs> this is my favorite scene when that skeleton just beats the crap out of Donald and freaking Neil, and they're just like, <laughs> he's whooping them up. And then he comes back to the dream world after that, and uh, and you know, this is also the part that reveals Freddy's been, you know, feeding on all the souls he's been killing, so they're inside his body, which that, I think kind of gets taken care of in part five, or not part five, part four, which I'll talk about in a moment, because I'm almost done with this movie, but uh, so yeah, that's one of the best scenes, this is where Joey finally is able to talk. And he yells out, no, because Freddy's captured Kristen, Nancy, and Kincaid. And they're like, you found your dream bars. Oh, you beat him. Yay, yay, yay. I, I swear to God, if he would have died because Joey yelled and busted all the mirrors in that Freddy was in, that would have been stupid, and that would have weighed down this movie a lot. Thankfully, they rectify it. <laughs> so anyway... After all that, they're celebrating. They're happy, like, yay, yay, we beat Freddy. <laughs> and then out of nowhere, Nancy's dad pops up. Clearly a Freddy trick. And, you know, this is the thing that I had an issue with with this. What they had Nancy as in part one and what they had her as in this one was kind of weird because she was smart enough to realize, you know, my power, you know, my screams and that is giving Freddy the power that he needs to keep killing people. If I don't scream and I show no fear and I just walk away and take the power away from him, he's gonna die. Now, yes, uh, does that still make no sense? Yes, it does, but you know, that's the way that movie ended. This one here, she should have realized it was a freaking trick by Freddy in the first place. Like, oh, uh, yeah. I don't know, Daddy. Uh, I don't know. You might be Freddy Krueger. No, baby. All he says is crossed over. She's hugging him all happy, you know. Were you really that desperate for your dad's affection, too? I mean, seriously? You didn't realize... And yeah, she's more of an adult now, but still. That's kind of like... You know... It's just weird. So, Freddy's able to get Nancy, kill her in this one. And he goes to finish off... And yeah, Nancy was kind of the protector in this one of the kids, which I'll talk about with Laurie Strode in the Halloween movie. This new one. Uh, but Nancy was kind of trying to protect all the kids from Freddy this time around. She wasn't trying to protect herself. She was trying to protect Kristen and all them that were dealing with Freddy. And she was kind of a parent. So, you know. But. She does you know, fall for a trick like that. That just made it seem like Nancy was so stupid. And then when her dad mentions crossed over when Freddy disguises her dad, and he's like, I couldn't cross over, baby, without telling you how much I love you. She's like, crossed over? Al Pacino moment. What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but how do you not know what crossed over means? And how do you know that Freddy didn't kill your dad? I mean, honestly. I mean, yeah, Freddy did kill her dad and all that, which is why also in A New Nightmare makes no sense on why they're trying to get Heather in A New Nightmare... The storyline is Wes Craven and them are trying to get Heather to play Nancy again one last time. But yet, Nancy died in three. And then Donald somehow is a cop again, a top-notch cop. And, you know, he's still alive too. That's why I have a big issue with The New Nightmare, which I'll talk about that when I finally get the chance to review that here on YouTube. 
Alright, so here's you know the Aunt Nancy's funeral. He sees Amanda Kruger's ghost. He goes and he sees that it was Amanda Kruger this whole time. And that's pretty much how the movie ends. With him sleeping and then the light flips on and you know. So, what is my score for a nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, Dream Boy of? I give it a 5 out of 5. I mean, the movie's great. Some of the Nancy stuff I thought was stupid that she couldn't see through Freddy's tricks. I don't care if she is an adult now and if she is being more like a parent to Kristen than Kristen's own mom was. But, you know, it's just, it made no sense. Now, yes, Nancy did save before she died. She did save Kristen one last time from Freddy. Because she jumped up, put Freddy's claw into him. And he's like, oh, I got stabbed by my own claw. But, yeah. So, yeah, I give Nightmare on Street Part 3, Dream Warriors, a 5 out of 5. It is the best Nightmare on Elm Street movie out there, even though I love 5. But, I'm going to jump this, take this one out and put in Part 4. Uh, you're going to have to see a Xbox screen for a minute so I get this put in. I'm in the running time. Oh, Jesus. That's going to be as long as the other two, and I had issues uploading part one and part two. I also goof around and played with my NECA Nightmare No Street figures. Um, Alright. I might have a potential another thing to do for the contest when I do the contest. Alright. Come on. <sighs> Try to be faster on this, reviewing this one than I did the other one. Got to break down a lot of it because I also want to talk about the Halloween movie at the end. New Line Cinema. Entertainment. Yeah. Huh. Hopefully this one doesn't take as long as the other one upload. That was the other one that upload. Alright, gotta do as you can see, Dream Master, Dream Warrior. Alright, scene selection. This one has music videos at the end too. Alright, so Nightmare on Elm Street 4, the sequel to Nightmare on Elm Street 3, because 3 was so, they were going to end it with 3, which I forgot to mention when I was just reviewing 3, they were going to end Nightmare on Elm Street after part 3, but, because of how well part 3 did, they made a sequel, we get some new characters in this, the characters, the main characters from the last one, all pretty much die early in the movie, I mean... Kind of a weird thing because Nancy was in most of part three until the end and then she died. Kristen, on the other hand, not only is she does she die early, she's played by a totally different actor, which is Tuesday night. Um they didn't want to pay Patricia Arquette to come back as Nancy. So the first half of the movie is pretty much Kristen as the main character. Then the second half turns to Alice as the main character. And I've mentioned time and time again, Alice is my favorite final girl. I really like this movie. You know, part three, the last one I just did was my mom's favorite. Part four, this one I'm doing right now is my sister's favorite. And then my favorite was part five, even though I know part three and four are better movies than part five, but you know. So, there's Alice right there, played by Lisa Wilcox. And unlike Tuesday Night, or unlike uh, Patricia Arquette, I think it's Patricia Arquette, yeah. You know, Lisa Wilcox does come back for the sequel. So, honestly, my biggest issue with this is, because apparently she's in high school with Alice and them, and she's kind of like a sister, because, well, not only that, she's dating Alice's brother. But, I don't know where this, what time this is supposed to be. How long has it been since the incident? In 
Weston. What made Sims relinquish the fact? What made Sims make them come out of, you know? What made Sims decide, oh, okay, they can come back into the real world now? I don't get it. But, <laughs> pretty much, yeah, that's the only thing I have an issue with with this movie. Now, I think, I don't know how Kristen's character would have been portrayed had Patricia Arquette came back in this one. If they would have paid her. Would she have been, I mean, would she have been, kind of, and honestly, I think they should have did what they did with Nancy. Like, now she's older, she's the parent figure. She's going to try to protect Alice, because now Freddy's after Alice. But, pretty much he's after Kristen, Joey Kincaid. And it's funny, because they, at the beginning, she pulls them into the dream, because she thinks Freddy's coming back, and this and that. And Joey and Kincaid's like, nah, you need to get over it. He's not coming back, blah, blah, blah. He's dead and gone. We got better things to dream about. Da, 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 da. But when Freddy attacks them both first, they scream for Kristen, even though Kristen wasn't asleep that night when they both died. So, he, they both yell for her. And, you know, I guess they thought they had Kristen's partner. Like, Kristen, like Kincaid when he dies, which is like the coolest death in this movie. Kincaid, when he dies, he's like, Kristen, Freddy's back, Freddy's back, Freddy's back. You know, because uh, I think Freddy possessed his dog, Jason. <laughs> and Jason pulled Kincaid into the dream, resurrected Freddy, and then the dog came unpossessed and ran out of the dream. So that's how Kincaid died. Joey died having pretty much another wet dream. And, you know, one of my favorite lines from Freddy Krueger is, How's this for a wet dream? <laughs> and, you know, as Joey's getting pulled under, he's like, Kristen! Kristen! Hey, y'all should have listened to Kristen in the first place. Anyway, um, so Kristen, I think the reason why she was left alive throughout most of this movie is to give a lot of exposition to the other main characters, such as Alice, Dan, Rick, uh, what's her face, uh, the chick that worked out, uh, but, you know, before Kristen died, she gives Alice her dream powers, and then, you know, Alice starts pulling people into dreams unintentionally, like her friend Sheila, her brother Rick, uh, Debbie, yeah, that was her name, Debbie. Debbie, you know, she even has Dan in a dream with her when Freddy's got him rotating around, which is one of my favorite scenes of this movie as well, is, you know, the thing where they keep going in a circle and, you know, Freddy preys on a lot of their fears, like, you know, Deb was afraid of, afraid of roaches, so he turns her into a roach, crushes her in a roach motel, and I remember, I think when they did the Freddy's Nightmare show... It started out, it was going to be an anthology show where they, you know, but then I think they started doing things where they showed Freddy Krueger movies. Or it might have been that freaking TNT Monster Vision thing. I remember that too. It might have been that. So pretty much Alice has, you know, been pulling people in. Uh, but the straw was when her brother Rick finally gets pulled in and he dies and, you know, because her dad treats her bad and, you know, her brother Rick's always there to try to protect her because her mom died. Uh, her dad's a raging alcoholic in this one, which he redeems himself in the next one. But, you know, so it's up to Alice to take down Freddy. And, you know, she wrecks after Debs dies and Dan nearly dies, but he gets brought back. Also, you know, if you've seen my commentary, you've seen that I showed off. Well, actually, I did a review of him last year. I need to. I showed off the Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4, Dr. Freddy. It was the cloth one. It wasn't an ultimate edition. I also showed off the Part 3 one, but it was also cloth edition. I still haven't found the ultimate edition. If I would, I probably would have used it for this video. But the other one, the cloth one, uh, yeah. Anyway. But, you know, Alice takes on in the way. And, you know, the thing about this one, too, is the way he beats Freddy. But she she does the little Dream Master poem, which she's trying to remember throughout the movie. She's like, evil will see itself and it shall die. And then she shows a mirror and Freddy sees the inside of himself and that causes him to die. Now, <clears throat> that's one of the weakest points of this movie. 
other than what's the freaking timeline after Chris and them dealt with Freddy in the insane asylum called Western Hills and uh, and yeah there were some other things like Rick you know doing kung fu to the air which you know I make a joke about it like the biggest rivalry in this movie is Rick in the air which you know you see right in the beginning but Rick's like a kung fu like into kung fu and he you know I guess practicing but it's mostly kicking the air and punching the air you know he's got a punch behind him but yeah as far as Nightmare on Elm Street I gotta give this one there are a few things I have a nitpick about it but I'll give this one a 4 out of 5 I think it's one of the best even though there's some things that are inconsistent from the other one but hey Got my favorite final girl in it, Alice. I want to pull up Vince McMahon and go, oh yeah, Alice, yeah, Alice, ah. Oh yeah, speaking of which, I'll talk about that too. Anyway, now for the Halloween movie. Uh, right, first of all, big disappointment. Now, my biggest issue with this movie, some of the kills are good. Some of the, some of the storylines good. Uh, my biggest issue with the movie though is, you're gonna make, you're trying to reestablish this guy's the shape. And if you've seen all the other Halloween movies, even the bad sequels, Michael Myers was pretty much. He would ninja style stealthy kill people. That's why he's just walking right out in the open. Like, oh, the duck, the duck. He sees somebody in their house, walks right in and kills them. Which is a scene you've seen in the trailer. Uh, and you've seen the scene where he's walking out, so it's not really spoilers. You've seen the scene where he's out walking the streets where everybody's out. And then he goes up and kills someone else. Like, oh. Yeah, I gotcha. But the way the movie started. I knew it was going to be a disappointment because, you know, you, there's a scene that also was shown in a trailer that's at the beginning where them reporters are talking to him. He pulls out the mask and everybody's freaking out. But then the doctor starts, you know, then the reporter starts saying stuff like, Say something, Michael! Say something! Say something! And then we get the credits. Now, yeah, I like how they did the credits. It was like an old school Halloween movie with the credits and how that ran and all that. That was pretty cool. And, the, you know, the jack-o'-lantern re-inflating, kind of. Because you know how it deflates at the end of, well, at the beginning of the opening credits of the first one. But, anyway. But you're trying to establish this guy as the shape. Again, but he's out amongst people, not being stealthy, like he was in the first one. Uh, and just walks into someone's house, and I'm sure a ton of people seen it. Like, oh, some creepy guy in a mask just walked in this lady's house. Then not too long after that, we hear screaming and yelling. And another thing, too, I got an issue with, and I'm so sick and tired of people doing this with other movies, but they won't do it with the movie because they get blinded by nostalgia glasses. The thing with the freaking callbacks. I hear so many people nag. That's one of the things people nag the Ghostbusters movies about. Well, the new Ghostbuster movie about. Oh, uh. They're supposed to be in a different universe than that Ghostbusters, but then they're doing all these callbacks and they have Ernie Hudson and all these cameos and blah, 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 blah. Okay. What about, you know, you're supposed to be erasing every movie after part one. But yet, you're doing a lot of callbacks to a lot of sequels. Even there's one point toward the end where there's a callback to part six. I'm not going to say what it is, but there's a callback to part six. But we're deleting these movies. These movies don't count. And I feel like the way they just discounted the freaking story about him being brother and sister, what you see in the trailer, that's the way to discount it. They don't do nothing else. To really give it, I don't know, uh, any credibility. Like, oh, you know, 
well, Mike, you know, they took a DNA test, and yeah, Michael and Lori aren't related, or blah, 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 blah. It's just, I don't know, that was something someone made up to feel better about themselves. But, there is a lot of callbacks. There's a callback to part two, part three, part four, part five, part six. There's a lot of callbacks to it, but yet, they're supposed to be erasing all those movies. None of the movies are supposed to exist. Thankfully, there was no callback to Resurrection. Thank God. I hate that movie. But, and all the people, I think the reason why people praise this movie, and I don't give a crap what anybody says. They don't praise it because, oh, it was such a better movie made. And, uh, da, 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 da. They're praising it because Jamie Lee Curtis is back. And they got, like, strong feelings about her being such a great actress, but they're like, oh, we're praising this movie because Jamie Lee's back. They're getting rid of the storyline of their brother and sister. With... We don't need the uh, reason behind why someone's killing blah, 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 blah. That's all I hear from a lot of people that review movies. Especially movies like that that get good reviews. I mean, honestly. Uh, I feel like the kills were rushed. Yes, they were. I did like that they were gorier and better than the original movie. There was a lot more gore, which was pretty cool. Uh, but they felt like they were rushed. They felt like they meant nothing. Uh, they feel like that, you know... I don't know. It's just very stupid. And I say, oh, this... When I first saw the trailer of this movie, I thought, oh, I'm getting H2O vibes. H2O is a little bit better than this movie. H2O would get a 3 out of 5. This movie, I'm not going to say it's as bad as Resurrection, because nothing could be as bad as Resurrection. I don't care what people say about the remakes, and people that may agree with me about this movie, it's not as bad as Resurrection. I'll give it that. There were some good things about it. And I've been hearing a lot of reasons why people have been nitpicking this movie is because they're trying to push a female agenda because there was three females that survived at the end. Really? That sounds like you're totally mental. Have you not seen a freaking horror movie? How many times is a woman the main character in a horror movie, you dummies? I mean, honestly. Yeah. I may not like the movie, but I don't dislike it because... They're trying to push a female agenda because they're not. Lori was protecting some people that she cared about. That's all I'm going to say because I don't want to spoil it. Lori was protecting some people that she cared about against Michael. It wasn't no female agenda at all. It's not like she kicked him in the gonads and he fell down the steps. Or it's not like she, you know, did all this other stuff. But yeah. What idiots are saying they're trying to push a female agenda? Stupid idiots. Anyway. But yeah, Halloween res this Halloween movie was really a big disappointment. I was really excited. I was hoping I'd be wrong about this movie, but guess what? I realized I wasn't wrong about this movie. This movie was as bad as I thought it was going to be. Not Resurrection bad, though. Not Resurrection bad. I'll give it that. I couldn't even give a score to Resurrection. I could give Halloween 2018, I could give it a 2.5 out of 5. There were some good things about it, but there were some bad things about it. And I just feel like it was a big disappointment. Maybe we should just go ahead and do Halloween 9 and still pretend that Resurrection doesn't exist. Or how about do a part 2, a, a second part 8 since we've done like 3 part 2's in this series. How about we get 2 part 8's and be like, screw what Resurrection did. <sighs> anyway, um, yeah, I could give the movie a 2.5 out of 5. It was close to a three, but I was really hoping this movie would have been better. And the movie really let me down. Uh, there's probably going to be a sequel because this movie has made a lot of money. And everybody else, aside from me, from what I could tell, I've seen a lot of people post their reviews. I haven't watched any of their reviews, but what I'm seeing in the title of the thing is they're pretty much saying, Oh, this one was better than any of the other ones. You know, and if you're going to try to erase Pooh through Resurrection, 
Why are you doing all these callbacks? Honestly, why are you doing all the callbacks? Why? You're doing callbacks to these movies that you consider were garbage, and you want to erase them all. Makes no sense. Anyway, um... That's it. I think I've ranted enough about this movie, and, you know, my thoughts on this Nightmare on Elm Street movie. I'll give it a 4 out of 5. I mean, yeah, there's a few things I had issues with in the movie, but... It didn't ruin my entertainment of this movie, so pretty much it. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to do a review of the Rob Zombie Halloween movies. And then Thursday, I'll be doing another review of the original Halloween 1 and 2. So, that'll do it. I'll catch you guys later, and peace out.